Hey folks, and welcome back to another episode of Straight Talk Whiskey. I'm Nick, here with you as always, and thanks for joining us for episode number 119. So, after a recent trip over our spring break, we ventured to the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest to be specific, and Washington's Long Beach, located on the Cape Disappointment Peninsula. And so I got there a little bit before some of the friends that I was going to be staying there with. And so like you do, you look around and one of the things that came to mind was, I wonder if they've got any distilleries around here. So when I looked up, we got a drift distillers, which I thought, okay, this is probably something that is sourced from somewhere else. And you know, they're just producing it like a lot of places do. And so I didn't really have too many great expectations going in. To be honest, I didn't really do too much research. But when I got there, I was pleasantly surprised. It's located sort of right next to the beachfront axis and right at the mouth of the Columbia River. I mean, it's a be absolutely beautiful location. And so I walked in. It's the only person there um, that was visiting. And so I went up to the bar and just talked a little bit and got a little bit uh, more to know about the distillery itself come to find out that they're actually producing their own whiskey you can see it quite clearly when you look past the bar and you start to see the stills that are right there for your viewing pleasure and also just hearing a little bit about them and the fact that yes they are uh, label themselves as you know small batch craft distilled and so as i've talked about before that means almost nothing nowadays because so many people try to put that on their label, try to say that they're small batch. They don't quantify what small batch means. They say that they're, you know, craft distillery and don't really define what that is. But anyway, if you're looking for sort of the craft distillery, small batch, sort of the pinnacle for what that means, a drift distillers is really what that's all about. You know, it's no huge marketing ploy. They're just like grassroots, just getting it going with, you know, they've got their gin. They've got a uh, the Adrift uh, whiskey out there that I wasn't able to taste. So what I have for you today for episode 119 is their white whiskey. If you couldn't guess by the color or lack of color in the bottle. So anyway... If you were around the Washington area or in a place where you can order it online or something like that, I definitely suggest that you check it out. If you're in the area, Long Beach area or just the the coast, it's it's well worth the drive and well worth stopping in. They also have a restaurant nearby at a hotel, just a, a building down closer to the water where you can actually get a beautiful view, is the Pickled Fish which actually went there about two days after it, I had stopped at the distillery and some really good food, really awesome atmosphere, great staff. Can't recommend it highly enough. So anyway, let's get into this whiskey. So it's bottled at a nice 44%. I like that. A little bit uh, higher than the above average distillers will do at 43. So I like the 44 on there. We've got batch number, bottle number if you're interested in that. And the bottling date, which is pretty cool. So we've got July 2nd, 2018. So this has been sort of on the shelf for a little bit now, but eventually got my hands on it. So what they're doing with this is uh, using a grain. It's actually a hybrid of wheat and rye that's called triticale or triticale, or there's about seven, 1,700 other pronunciations of it. We all know what we're talking about. So way back in the day, this is not something that is relatively new. It's been around for a long time, I believe since the 19th century or something like that. It was first experimented with and only in about the 1950s did a, a university, I believe the University of Michigan actually started doing some pretty in-depth like breeding programs on the actual hybrid grain. And so I think it's a really unique, again, going back to the what is, you know, a craft distillery, you know, it's people like this that are just experimenting. And yes, there's some other people that are experimenting with this hybrid grain, but you don't hear about them a lot. And it's definitely not in the mainstream with the big time producers. So anyway, uh, goes on to say, uh, the whiskey uses a raw grain and two malted varieties in order um, to comprise the whole mash bill of this, and also that it's stored less than 24 hours in rested cooperage. So, that's why we get sort of get the lack of 
color there. But again, I love it. It's just straight to the point, really blunt, clean packaging, no frills, no nothing, no over marketing, no trying to claim, you know, that, you know, whatever the town of Long Beach had some ties, you know, to the distilling heritage of a drift, you know, these ra random overly hyped claims that get put out there. We know we've all seen them. We can sort of read through all that. But anyway, let's go in and see, see what we got here. No need to talk about the color, obviously. The beautiful thing that's on the nose, and it really plays in well with the taste, is just this nice, really new, young, vibrant, energetic spirit, pun intended there. But it's just really refreshing, and it's uh, it's not like other white whiskeys that I've had and that have a, like an overly soured note to them. Looks like a, an overripe grape or something like that. But it's more of a an earthy type of vibrancy that's going on there. One of the the big notes that I take away from it is like a rye toast, like rye bread. This fascinating aroma on there. Let's go in for the taste. I think they're wise. Very wise to bottle this at 44% ABV because what you get is this myriad of flavors that is going on in here. So you get the really like rich, earthy cereal notes from the grain, but then it evolves and you get sort of this spiciness, the rye characteristic that I was talking about, like a rye bread, rye toast, just really, just really uh, flavorful bites. Like you bite into something and you just hit like the sweet spot, you know, almost like a, like a rye bread with some raisins baked in there, sprinkle a little cinnamon on top and, you know, lather it with a thin layer of butter. You got this in a glass. I like the fact that this whiskey is something I can just see myself just sipping at for a while. It's not like, you know, Jack Daniels unaged rye. And you first have that, you really have to put it in context, right? That you're seeing this progression from something they're trying that's new, you know, changing the mash bill from, you know, a hundred plus years ago and that sort of thing where you're getting sort of like, the growing pains that go in with this. This feels like a white whiskey in that sense, but it's polished. It feels like it was produced to be a white whiskey, you know, not an experiment, not a, a see how the progress is going type of thing. And I don't know if that was the intention or not, but it comes across as like a company that's trying to make some age product. But in the meantime, instead of just producing like gin, vodka, liqueurs, and things that other companies do, they're putting out just right off the stills, you know, cut down to 44% ABV and just that's what it is, you know, and it's that good because it can just stand on its own. Really like it in that sense. I'll take one more pass at it. We'll let you go. Just really extremely flavorful. And I just love, like, the mouthfeel usually, like, come up with a couple notes. But the mouthfeel on this one changes over time. So the first time that it hits your tongue, it's this really, like, smooth, like, creamy, malted grain. Just, like, really easy on the palate. And then it turns into this more, like, prickly, almost chewy note, right? And those, the rye toast that I was alluding to, very forward in the finish on that but the finish in and of itself is not overly long but it's clean it doesn't leave like a a sour overly medicinal aftertaste like a lot of the unaged whiskeys do particularly the unaged rye uh, from jack daniels but anyway i don't have anything else that i can compare it to because i haven't tasted anything like this before with the uh triticale so 
going to look for some more out there. If you know of any, let me know, and maybe I can see if I can get my hands on some. But, you know, took a little bit of a break. He haven't been on here for a couple weeks, trying to get those funds generated again to, to buy some interesting stuff for you to uh, watch and explore and that sort of thing. So thanks for joining me once again. And uh, if you're going to drink, as always, drink responsibly, and we'll see you next time.